Good morning. It is the third Sunday in Advent, also known as Gaudete Sunday, which means rejoice. In this time of worship, we remember that God is with us. God is with us in joy and in sorrow. In Jesus Christ, God reshapes the past, the present, and our future. We wait with God for something new to emerge. In this time of worship, we await the birth of Jesus. We wait with hope, preparing to rejoice in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Loving God, compassionate Son, healing Spirit, you approach us with such kindness and tenderness. You look kindly on us, no matter what our state or condition. You care for this world is greater than we could ever ask or imagine. You bring order from chaos. You turn weeping into laughter. You turn sorrow into joy and death into new life. You redeem all that appears lost, making all things new. And so we come to you in joy, resting from our work and responsibilities, trusting you to bring peace amid our anxiety and hope into these uncertain times. Receive our worship this day as we anticipate the difference your gifts will make to us through Christ your Son, and our Savior. Amen. And now, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors as we say together, Generous and gracious God, we confess that at times our love is small and our concern is narrow. These days, we easily become preoccupied with statistics and case numbers and fear of dying. Opportunities to say thanks, to offer encouragement, to remember each other in friendship slip by. Anxiety turns us inward and anger can make us lash out. Forgive us for neglecting the joy at the heart of the Advent season. Turn our hearts back to you and inspire us with your love made flesh in Jesus Christ. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now the collect for the third Sunday in Advent. God of light, who sent the Baptist to offer hope and to face the world's scorn, open our ears to hear the cries from the margins, exposing our fears, sharpening our vision and calling us to faith through Jesus Christ, the one who is to come. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up 
the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. We say together the song of good news from the prophet Isaiah. We say that by the whole verse. Go up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of joy. Lift up your voice in strength, Jerusalem. Herald of Joy. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord comes in might, comes to rule with his mighty arm. Behold, his reward is with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd will he feed his flock, gathering the lambs in his arms. He will hold them to his breast. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen to the words from the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. The, the ruach of God is upon me. The holy breath of God, the holy breath that 
that breathed over the cosmos and brought it into existence. The same holy breath that separated the waters so the people of Israel could escape from Egypt. That same Ruach, that same holy breath blew over Isaiah to anoint him, to empower him, to, to strengthen him for his unique ministry, which was to bring good news, to bring gospel, to a people on the margins who desperately, desperately needed to hear some good news. And, and, and listen to what he was going to do. He was going to not only bring good news to the oppressed, he was going to bind up the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to the captives, release the prisoners. He was going to comfort those who mourn. Those verbs, all action verbs, all powerful action verbs, they were about, they were about Yahweh moving a broken nation from a place of powerlessness to a place of being able to live with dignity, about moving a people who were living with despair and pain into a place of overwhelming joy. This was not just good news. This was not just gospel. This was holy gospel. This was God's gospel. And it was life-changing. This was about a reboot, a reboot for a people, a reboot for a nation, a reboot for the world. And listen to what the results of that reboot were going to be. After Yahweh had done these things for them, listen to these words. The people whose lives had been changed, the people who were recipients of Isaiah's proclamation and Yahweh's work were going to build up, raise up, repair, heal a broken nation. Just the best, the best of good news, the best of gospel, holy gospel. Okay, we, we, we come to John. We come to John and we hear the words in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. But then we suddenly move from that otherworldly poetic introduction to a very blunt statement. There was a man sent from God. And I would suggest to you to say that John was sent from God is to say that that same spirit, that same ruach, that same holy breath that breathed over creation, that breathed over the Red Sea, that breathed over the countenance of Isaiah, that same holy breath breathed over John to empower him, to anoint him, to ordain him for his unique role in life. And, and John was very clear about what that role was. He, he said for all to hear, I, I am not the light. I am not the Messiah. I am not Elijah. I, I am not the prophet. I'm not the savior. So what was he? To borrow an archaic term, he was the pavier. He was not the savior. He was the pavier. One who paved, one who prepared the way. And, and he did that. He did that by proclaiming good news. He did that by proclaiming gospel. By proclaiming the gospel is found in the prophets. And he tied the threads of scripture together and got people excited about the threads of scripture so that they could see the light when it came into the world, so that they could see Jesus and know who he was. So that when John said, behold, the Lamb of God, the people would get excited. The people would rise up, would build and restore and heal the broken world because in the purpose of Jesus, in the purpose of the one for whom John was preparing the way, 
God was coming to bind up the broken, to bring release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind. In the person of Jesus, life was going to be transformed and restored. In the person of Jesus, those who were oppressed were going to find dignity. In the person of Jesus, those who had pain and sorrow were going to find healing and overwhelming joy. And that's, that's good news. That's gospel. That's holy gospel. But, but make no mistake about it. Wherever John spoke, wherever John drew the threads of scripture together, wherever John brought the good news from the scriptures of his people, he was shining light into the darkness of his broken world. Shining light which gave people hope and excitement. The world needed its savior, but before its savior could come, it desperately needed a pavior. Which kind of takes me in a weird sort of way to today, actually to the days of my youth, um, for those of you who, who are my age, you may remember going to rock concerts. And, and at some point in the concert, at a very dramatic part, um, people would start to light lighters. And they would hold up their lighters and, and wave them to the sound of the music. And it became like a magical moment. Because at that time, when we were all burning our thumbs on our lighters, as the lights flickered in the, in the building, there was this sense that everything was going to be okay. There was a sense of peace and of joy and of hope, all because of these stupid lighters. I think we need some of that today. I really think we need some of that. Um, as I'm sitting here talking to this camera, um, our world ha has become a darker place week by week. Um, week by week, no, day by day, we hear that the numbers of people infected with COVID are increasing at astronomic levels. Day by day, the level of fear and uncertainty and anxiety and, and, and depression goes up and up and up. We need, at this time of year, to celebrate the birth of a Savior. Of that, there's no doubt. But before we can do that and do it with any sense of joy, I believe we are in need of an army of paviors. I think, I think that every time, every time we think of people who are locked away in their homes or apartments, feeling depressed or sad or lonely, and we take the time to call them up just to say hello. It's like shining a light in the darkness. When, when we become aware of people, family or friends or neighbors whose hearts are aching and we take the time to reach out by phone or by FaceTime just to give them a sense that they're cared for it's like shining a light in the darkness of the world. I, I believe we would do well, all of us, to think of, of, think of our family and our friends. Think of the people who have touched our lives. Think of the people we care most deeply about. And we need to take the opportunity just to call them up, just to reach out and say, 
I love you. Now, I know that's not Canadian. We're, we're reserved and we don't like to do that sort of thing. But listen, if you've never burned your thumb for this purpose of love and joy and hope, you're, you're missing something in life. The world desperately needs that. And, and so what I would encourage you to do is to picture that image from the concert because that first light, that first light leads to an arena full of flickering lights. And that arena full of flickering lights is what brings hope and joy and peace. You reaching out, you sharing hope, you taking the time to say, I love you. That could lead to a world full of flickering lights. And if we begin to do that, begin to do that and do that well, then we may find ourselves with the courage to raise up, to build up and to restore a world which right now is broken and hurting and frightened. I believe that if you will just listen, listen closely, you may just hear, you may just feel the Ruach, the holy breath of God blowing on you, anointing you, empowering you for your unique purpose in life, which is to touch those around you with love, with peace, with hope, and with joy. To work together, to reboot our city, our nation, our world, and to do that in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we respond to God's word by saying together, Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, 
with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Come, Christ Jesus, be our guest, and enter our lives today with your blessing. We are lonely for you and the peace that you bring. Draw near to us in friendship and faithfulness, so that in this season which combines celebration in the face of uncertainty, we may know your presence and say with all your people, Rejoice! Rejoice! rejoice. rejoice. Emmanuel shall, shall come, come to thee, O Israel. Israel. Come, Christ Jesus, be our guide, and show us the way to wisdom and gratitude. We are thankful for the kindness we know in friends and good neighbors, in warm houses and warm smiles, which hold off the darkness and the fear of the future. Encourage us to reach out to those who need your embrace and ours, so that together we may delight in your presence. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel shall come, come to thee, O Israel. Come, Christ Jesus, be our hope, and touch us with your healing and grace. We remember before you all those we know and those known to you alone, who are living with loss or illness this season, those who face dep depression and discouragement, and all who find it hard to celebrate Christmas this year. Shine the light of, of your comfort into their lives as we think of the hope that dawns in your love. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Come, Christ Jesus, be our King and claim your rightful place in our hearts. Our world is struggling for the justice and mercy you bring. Draw near to our leaders and citizens working for peace and justice and those striving to contain and heal the effects of the pandemic. Encourage honorable action and cooperation on all sides. Give hope to people under oppression and to those who live with fear or hunger day by day. Hasten the day when the world's peoples will live as neighbors, reconciled in your truth and freedom. We pray for Todd, our bishop, and all bishops and clergy who are working creatively to maintain the church in our current challenging situation. We continue to pray for our selection committee as they go about the very challenging task of finding a new priest who will lead St. George's boldly into the future. We pray for our wardens and parish council as they work to maintain the life and ministry of this parish family. We pray for one another as we continue to navigate uncharted territory in our church our community, and our personal lives as we struggle to defeat COVID-19. And now, as our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save, Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Go now, for you are chosen and sent in the Spirit. Pray at all times. Be thankful in all circumstances. Keep what is good, avoid every kind of evil. To all in need, bear witness that the time has come when the Sovereign Lord will save his people. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those whom you love and pray for today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. Come now, long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free from our fears and 
sins release us, let us find the rest in me. Kingdom bring.